13 love it's all see more bait i want to get right into this this is a, a video where i'm documenting my core warranty against this three-letter alphabet agency group that is absolutely not government um some of you know them as the internal revenue service tosh Sweet bay identifies them appropriately in my opinion as the inquisition revenue service go figure that out so let's get into the letters that they sent me okay so i was doing uber in in the year um 2017, 2018, and 2019, and never filed the taxes because I started learning about my Morris birthright within the year uh, 2017. So basically, I never filed, and then I went ahead and filed in 2021 last year so that i can apply for this um ppp forgivable loan i got it i already have the loan forgiven everything's fine as far as that however because i did that because i because in order to get it I, I had to demonstrate that i either had a small business that was affected by the, the covid or that i was an independent contractor like a gig economy worker and i certainly was i was working uber uh all the way through until the pandemic and then that dramatically um affected that work so to make a long story short i had to demonstrate the the quote-unquote income that i was generating and i say quote-unquote because you know well, that's another story. I'll, I don't feel like open up the law dictionary now. I'll probably do it uh, later on. But income is, is not labor. Labor and income is not synonymous. I'll just say that. So anyway, I, I did the whole uh, filing. It was at H&R Block. That was in the first half of 2021. And then it gave me the necessary paperwork to qualify for that uh, second PPP and then I, I just had it forgiven some months ago. So from doing that, this um, this three-letter alphabet agency group sent me this letter. They sent me numerous letters, but this is the only letter that I have that is worth sharing. And they claim that I owed them, as you can see here, um, basically... Twelve thousand Federal Reserve notes, private commercial paper, and I say that because this is not money, and it's certainly not dollars. Dollar is a, it's a minted, coined, silver, or gold. That's what a dollar is. All right, Toshri gets into that. The Yakan dollar. That's another story. I'll elaborate on that further but i just want to make that clear they're demanding federal reserve notes in the numerical value of twelve thousand and two hundred eighty four all right twelve thousand two hundred eighty four federal reserve notes that's a, that's a lot of finance that they're claiming that i owe through the year of 2019 okay the year just before all that shutdown stuff happened. All right, here's all my information. You know, I, bl I blotted out all the private stuff, of course, like the SSN and all that good stuff. But you can see it here. This is what they sent me. This was uh, last year, October 25th, 2021, Gregorian year. Okay. So basically, thanks to Taj Tariq Bay. Sabir Bay, um, numerous bays, okay? I've learned, and shout out to House of Reawakening Minds, um, Dr. G. For 
allowing all of these teachers to come and share how we can defend ourselves from these invaders who are not government and who are certainly not American, but are indeed uh, colonists, colonizers who are occupying our land as the aboriginals by a force of arms. And they operate through semantic deceit. They gen they produce these fraudulent contracts that are adhesion contracts. But this is what I wrote them. Um, and I, I learned this from uh, the various information Taj has put out, as many others. <clears throat> so I wrote them a core warranto. And for those who want to know what a Coronto is, a, a simple Google search. All right. I can get out the law dictionary, but I, I'm going to do that a little later. Um, I just want to get through this first. A core warranto is a writ or legal action requiring a person to show by what warrant an office or franchise is held, claimed or exercised. So in other words, you're, you're questioning, you know, from what authority do you have to do what you're doing? So me sending a core warranto <clears throat> to the Inquisition Revenue Service is essentially me challenging their authority to do that like how is it that you have the authority to do that when did you become it's like asking questions like when did you become government when you know what i mean qualify yourself you're not going to just send me a letter and tell me do this dude that's not how it works especially if there's no natural person and that's another thing that's a key detail i didn't even get into um let me pull it up that's a key detail. Can you find a sender anywhere on this letter? Does this say John Smith doing business as this or Jane Doe? No. There, the, of course, this is page whatever out of 10. There was 10 pages. But none of, none of the paperwork had anybody's name. There's no one. There's no natural person that I can look up and hold responsible for writing me this letter so this could be this could easily be a computer generated letter that is sent to me in the name of this corporation which we have to keep emphasizing is not government so if they're not government how do they have the the, the power to exercise you know government authority you if someone is sending you a letter and they're not putting and they're accusing you of something right and they don't put their name as i'm the accuser that that's 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 statutes of fraud and fraud has no limit limit or or, or, or however however the saying goes limit or statutation I, i'm not sure how the saying goes pardon me if anyone would know please please correct it in the comments but you see what i'm saying there is no natural person. You're just saying this corporation said this. The corporation can't speak. What man, what woman is personally doing business as this corporation saying I need to do that? That's how they get you, man. McDonald's can't speak. Walmart can't speak. None of these corporations can speak. Someone, someone, a man or a woman or people, which will be men and women or just men or just women are speaking and doing business under this name and they're hiding behind this thing sending that's bullshit for the record so hopefully people catch that detail early on so that's the position i came from all right so we're going to just go through this right so all of this symbology right here this was all from uh i think the judicial notice from uh RV Bay Publications. Shout out to Roz Varaya, the mother of the website rvbaypublications.com. All right. This is, I mean, can I blow this up? Um, okay. This is Ab Antiquo. This is the, the Great Pyramid Seal. I'm going to blow it up some more so y'all can see. And then I'll just undo it. See that? The great seal of the Moorish nation. All right. Need I say any more? Nah, we don't. So 
and this right here let me blow this up if you pay close attention that's a dark skin hand and that's a pale skin hand but if you observe the handshake the dark skin hand is gripping you see how the thumb is over the hand it's gripping it this symbolizes a binding agreement this dark skin hand is holding the pale skin hand in a binding agreement right and that's that's the symbology of what the treaty and constitution is the moors the aboriginal people aka we the people right consisting of the uh, the the origin of the constitution which actually comes from the iroquois right with the great law of peace people think that this document was established by so-called founding fathers it was not it was adopted by them it was established by the aboriginals of the land who became confederate with each other because the the the, the invasion of these colonizers they had to consolidate themselves politically in order to preserve what whatever was left of their birthright birth excuse me birthright at that time that's another story but that's the symbology of that just to just to elaborate and then this is of course the us the united states seal i don't need to blow that up all right it's the morris flag um this is the um the congressional congress flag um which was the government that existed prior to george washington yes there was a government before george washington it was the uh was it the congressional con what was the continental congress pardon me not congressional <laughs> continental congress sorry uh john hansen being the first president i think each president at that time held a two-year seat of office and this is of course the united states flag it is not the american flag i repeat it is not the american flag america is a continent we're not going to play these political games all right america is a continent it's called the americas it consists of the north central south america the pacific islands and the caribbean islands that is america that comprises of america it's the entire western hemisphere all right this 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 is not even a flag because flag if i bring out the law dictionary which i'm gonna do afterwards it implies a nation united states is not a nation it's a corporation it's a service corporation all right servicing the republic which is the united states of america republic okay but that's not what we operating right we're operating a democracy so what happened that's another story this is a trading banner this symbolizes uh, uh amity and commerce okay the the christian nations okay this is not a christian country though but it has been christianized due to doctrine of discovery that's another story and and various other military operations so without further ado let's get into it this is the core warrant that i sent notice to the agent is notice to principal notice to the principal is notice to the agent why did i say that okay we're gonna just do a quick google search to find this the principle is bound by the knowledge of or notice to an agent received while the agent is acting within the scope of his or her authority the agent's knowledge or notice is imputed to the principle and is constructive notice it's basically demonstrating that they have been put on notice and they can't act like they don't know they don't know what is being said to them okay um so this is what i said i'm just going to read it verbatim and um i'll elaborate afterwards it has come to my attention that a mysterious man or woman a natural person doing business as an irs agent has sent an alleged tax notice to a name that sounds like the name my parents named me however it is spelled in all capital letters this deceitful intentional misrepresentation is an attempt to falsely designate I, the natural person as a corporate entity, obligated to corporate tax obligations. For the record, I, Asasi Bay authorized representative for Charles Philemon, all caps, the corporate entity, estate, trust, 
straw man utility am a sentient flesh and blood walking talking divine being child of the most high's ahaya elohim hashem i hereby claim my lost estate and i do not abandon my estate the fundamental principles regarding elementary spelling of english words states when you are writing typing proper names such as people or places you must capitalize the first letter and then leave the remaining letters lowercase. Either this mysterious man, woman, natural person who sent this notice to me is incompetent regarding elementary spelling of English words or was intentionally attempting to falsely designate I, the natural person, as a legally dead or c civilly dead, right? Civil liter mortus, another story. 14th Amendment corporate entity estate trust straw man utility unlawfully administered by assumed trustees fiduciaries posed as government i do not acquiesce to any intentional misrepresentations of the corporate straw man utility estate trust being used being presented as i the natural person let the record show that ISR Seymour Bay, authorized representative for Charles Philemon, all caps, X relation, am a copper colored aboriginal. Get the hell down. My, my effing cat just jumped on my lap. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, copper colored aboriginal, indigenous American more. Hold on, let me let her out. Hey. Get out. Get back let's get back to this I am a copper colored aboriginal indigenous american Moor. by law i can never be a u.s citizen based on section 12 descendants of africans shall not be citizens quote uh end quote the constitutional ruling of the 1864 original article 13 also known as the 13th amendment with its original 20 sections if you're not aware if you people are not if, okay let me show you why you got to say that right if you google 13th amendment you go on see on google because you know google is three letter alphabet agency controlled right so you got to dig a little deeper some people go on different um web browsers do what you got to do to circumvent um all of the censorship uh let me see let's see so you go just quick google search right to try and find because when you go right they they took away 18 out of the 20 sections and only left you the first two you did do i mean do you see the screen what happened to thir what happened to the other 18 sections so that's why i said i said the original 20 sections okay so then you got to go to section 12 quick google search okay and you know, because this is Google, it may be a little difficult to find because of all the censorship. But with a little bit of digging, I just want to show you how, how the censorship is real and how you got to just be aware of what we're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? We're not dealing with what we think we are. We think we're dealing with government. That's not what we're dealing with. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. All right. So this is it. Let me see. Mm. Yeah, I don't I, I don't feel like going through this. But yeah, just just it's on rvbaypublications.com and with some with some research you can find it. Let's continue. 
How much time did I spend so far? Oh, it doesn't even show me. Oh, whatever. Let's continue. So, where we at? Okay. Therefore, any allegations of I, the natural person, being liable for taxes via a de facto foreign religious privately owned corporation unlawfully doing business on my ancestral estate is in violation of Article 5 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Quote, Indigenous people have the right to maintain and strengthen their distinct political, legal, economic, social, and cultural institutions while retaining their right to participate fully, if they so choose, in the political, economic, social, and cultural life of the state. End quote. When did the foreign de facto privately owned religious corporation Inquisition Revenue Service become constitutionally sanctioned to tax the aboriginal, indigenous, copper-colored, natural peoples, Moors in North America? This is the core warranto piece. I'm asking them questions and they have to answer it. Make that clear. Let's be very clear. They have to answer this. And if they don't, we about to see what happened. And and we're going to I'm going to demonstrate to you why after a year yeah, after a year ain't no response. Why is why is this mysterious natural person or persons requesting me to satisfy these alleged tax obligations with private commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes? under the guise as money being that constitutionally sanctioned money is coin gold silver copper that's another question they have to they have to answer there's no such thing as i don't gotta answer what you gotta no you have to answer and if you don't answer guess what acquiesce default judgment what you talking about they got people thinking that they don't gotta do nothing they gotta do a hell of a lot you got to prove who you say you think because you got a military. You, you notice they 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 generating this, what, 80,000 militia group under the guise as as armed agents. All I'm going to say is Revelations chapter 18, verse four, come out of her, my people, so that ye may not may not be partakers in her plagues and her destruction. I ain't saying run to another land. I ain't saying go run in the forest and be a prepper. Shout out to a big Levi. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, man. I'm just saying come out of her. Come out of the system. Come out of the culture. Come out of the traditions. Come out of the way of life. Come out of the customs. Come, Just come out of all of that. And certainly come out of the system. Do what you got to do to take care of yourself. But get the heck out of this satanic, evil, wicked, demonic system. When did the Aboriginal Indigenous Copper Colored Natural Peoples Moors at North America become liable for tax obligations from foreign colonial inquisitors unlawfully doing business on American soil? When did that happen? You was a pilgrim a few hundred years ago. You generated all these all these different militia groups. You overthrew the Republic secretly. Congress adjourned Sinadia, 1871. The only more out here talking this talk is Tosh Tariq Bay. There's other Moors talking this talk, like Valara Bay, Sister Valara Bay, uh, Sister Yafa Bay, but she goes into more spiritual. You feel me? And how satanic these people are. You dig? RVBayPublications.com, you know. There's other people, but for real, for real, Taj is out here, bro. And he's arming, he's, the pen is mightier than the sword. Everything from this article, for the most part, is from Taj. I'm just giving him credit where credit is due. They overthrew the Republic, and they have been incrementally encroaching on everybody's birthright, particularly Aboriginal peoples. We're not going to act like these people, is they're not government. 
So how did you get, how were you able to do these things? Because you got guns and military and intimidation and fake money. That's how. And people believing in you, whether they believe in you out of fear or out of genuine uh, deception. I don't believe in you. I condemn you and I rebuke you. I'm not no 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. I can never be that. It's against the law, and the law is the Constitution, which is only in existence from the treaty. And seeing how they dissolve the Constitution, like, like uh, what's his name, Rabbi Apostle, Ninth Summer Bay, AK-13 Son, the only thing that exists right now is the treaties. I'm a Moor, baby. There's nothing you can do about it. I will never be your slave. Never. I'm already bonded to the Most High's Elohim Hashem. I will never be your satanic surety. Uh, what is it? Genesis 15, verse 13. Know you, know you. Uh, and he said unto Abram, Know ye a surety that thy seed, something, something afflicted 400 years. Let's pull that up. I'm getting heated, but it's not really heated though. I'm serious about my birthright. These fake ass Europeans pretending to be Americans who are not. And fake ass Negroes pretending to be black who are not. And fake ass Hispanics pretending to be Spanish, Hispanic, and, and all this foolishness. All you motherfuckers. Stay in your lane. I stay in mine. I ain't got shit to do with y'all. Let's pull that up. I ain't playing with my fucking birthright, man. I don't give a fuck about none of these motherfuckers. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. What is a surety? I can open up the law dictionary. I'm going to do that in the next video. I'm just running through this right here. A surety. A person who takes responsibility for another's performance of an undertaking, for example, appearing in court or the payment of a debt. All right? So it's a debtor. It's someone obligated to a debt. I'm not obligated to your fake ass debt. And I will never be. All this debt is fake. Like Taj has been breaking down, these people have been going bankrupt over and over and over because by universal law, you cannot produce business enslaving other people. And that's what they do. Whether you call it human trafficking, whatever words you want to use, their, all their business is about is misery, suffering, and slavery. And they go bankrupt over and over and over and over again. And I will not be your surety. I rebuke these fake ass governments. I don't give a damn about this Jew tube controlled by these alphabet agency groups. Make sure you got that on record. I'm not a part of your fake ass satanic system. Don't tell me to calm down, man. This is serious, bro. You, people's lives are destroyed by these demons. Don't tell me to calm down. How many people's lives, how many people believe that these people are government? Don't begin, don't begin worried about me getting hype, man. I'm not gonna be assumed to be their surety. That's a that's a damn fact. I will not be their citizen, their Negro, their surety, nothing. I got ain't, I ain't got shit to do with these motherfuckers. Gonna emphasize that as much as my spirit feels like I need to. Where is your delegation of authority order issued by an Article Three judge to lawfully demand taxes from Aboriginal, Indigenous, copper-colored, natural peoples, Moors in North America? Well, how do you know you're an Aboriginal? You're black. We're not going to go there. For the record, I'm not black. At best, I'm Haitian, but Haitian was established in 1804. The Aboriginal peoples of that line of that island, particularly. Haiti, or Aiti, Kiskeya, is the Arawak, Taino, the Carib, and the Maroons, the Maroons, just to name a few. Okay? And these Aboriginals have ancestral ties to Southeast North America, which is Florida, right? As well as Central America and South America. So, essentially, we all got the same ancestors. 
And if you really want to go that far back, ain't nobody older than the Olmecs over here. And if you really want to go that far back, Washita Morst, being the oldest indigenous people in North America, they claim to go back to the to, the, to, the, to Lemuria or, or the Lost Continent of Mu. I don't give a damn about your black, fake-ass cultural group political construct. I'm not that. I'm not African-American. I'm none of that. Make sure you're clear about that. I'm an Aboriginal. Okay? When you take away the black, the, the colored, and all this bullshit, I'm Aboriginal. No, you're from Africa. Af we're still in Africa. You must not know that the same soil content that's in Florida, Alabama, and Georgia is the same soil content in Northwest Africa. And I'll, I'll, I'll interject that with, with more inf information later. Who is this mysterious man, woman, natural person who sent me such fraud, who is indeed liable for lawsuit via this attempted extortion method against an Aboriginal, Indigenous, Copper Color Native, natural person, American Moor in North America? Maybe that's why they didn't respond over a year. Maybe. If no natural person doing business as an IRS agent can intelligently and truthfully answer these questions within 13 business days, that I hereby will rule by default judgment that this alleged tax obligation is void ab initio and has no standing in law per the supreme law of the land, the Constitution for the United States of America Republic, as well as all treaties entered into before the 1789 adoption of that particular Constitution. I no longer domicile at that particular geographical location where these tax notices, quote unquote, were sent. Therefore, please send your correspondence. Oh, uh, psh, I'm going to block that out. FYI, I'll be posting all these engagements for the public record via the Internet, social media for the documentation of the decolonization in North America. And then I put my Bible quote. Because Noble Jarali, don't throw away your Bibles, Morris, because I will use them to condemn this government. Why? Because the philosophy that backs the law, that influences the laws of this government, stem from nature's law, which is nature's God, which is the same philosophy from the Bible. Every constitution for all of these states deal with the belief in the universal creator that they particularly call God. 13 Sun gets into this. You have to believe in the universal creator in order to become free from this satanic system. If you if you think you're an atheist or I'm not religious, I'm spiritual, you got it all fucked up. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. That quote, I first heard that quote from Taj. I ain't gonna lie. I, man, I'm telling you, I learned a lot of shit from Taj, man. And then I finally read the book of Chronicles. Um, and I, I comprehend the context of this quote. You know, this was Solomon. He was pleading, he was praying to the Most Highs when the temple was being built during his time of reign. And he was asking the Most Highs, when I've, whenever, you know, your children, the Israelites, come here, you know, asking for forgiveness please forgive their sins and basically pleading for the most highs to be there for us whenever they come into this temple which he which was built for the the the, the worship and the service of Elohim Hashem and most highs responded back to Solomon if i'm not mistaken people can correct me if they remember and responded saying this is this is how i will forgive your sins and this is how i will redeem you right this is the most highs response back to Solomon all right, anyway, so that's that. Now I'm going to get into part two and elaborate. Oh, I'm 34 minutes in. Go figure. Shush.